Good evening, everybody. So let us start our lecture this evening. Good evening. And, and today, uh, can you can you see my screen? Yes, we yes, can. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, right? We can see you. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. So uh, today's lecture will be short and especially I want to review. Review if you have some some questions about test two. Just I to confirm, do. Professor, the tests on Tuesday, right? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Six, same time. And it's online have, like the first? Yes, it will be online. Cool. All right. Thanks. OK. And uh, Although it says we will cover module one to five, but in your test two, you will get a question to write an abstract class and interface and some true false questions about interface uh, object relationship, especially if you go to. Uh, If you go to this test, OK, so this test, I'm not sure because we changed some. Uh, so this test, OK, so it has an abstract class. So my understanding is that if you are given like this kind of question, if you understand this, how to write an abstract class. OK, so no matter if I ask you to, to write an abstract class for a person or a vehicle, or a tree, or a furniture, or a student, you should be able to do this, okay? So the concept is that if, for instance, this class needs to be declared in abstract, and it contains at least these are the attributes, you see, these are the attributes, name, string type, and for instance, it did, so this is Boolean type, Okay, and an abstract method. Speciality is the abstract method activity. For instance, whatever your method name is asked, you will give the method name. But you know that the rule of declaring an abstract class is that an abstract class once an abstract class contains an abstract method. So what is an abstract method? An abstract method cannot have an implementation body. The same messages I'm telling you for the last several semesters, but still some students do mistake. I don't like you to do that mistake. It is good for me for grading. If you do correct, then you know, I can grade that in a few seconds. But if you do mistake, I have to look for, for your mistake. OK, so I wish everybody will do correct. Then I can grade quickly. OK. So an abstract method, this method cannot have any implementation. Can, cannot have any body. So some student, I am telling that it, get, it cannot have a body, but <laughs> I wish you will not, but I found some student, they gave an implementation empty body and they are arguing with me. Okay, I did not implement my method. So then finally, I have to bring your program, write, you write this code. Uh, replete or somewhere and then send me your program and I will see. After that, he stopped. Otherwise, he did not stop. Okay, and then whatever it says that it says write a concrete class teacher that inherits the abstract class. And then whenever it, a, a class, concrete class, inherit an abstract class, what does it do? It must implement or give the body of this unimplemented method, abstract method. That is the two things, two rules, okay? And your implementation can, can be anything. For instance, we say that to display the name and return status, whatever you say, you say, then, okay. So for this instance, I, my thinking is that if you are able to write this answer this question without using any ID, okay, then I think you are good and you have clear understanding about this. 
two things we are testing that you don't we're not testing that you have memorized code okay we're testing that you understand the code the concept so my my concept is my understanding is that if you can write this question correctly this question then you will crack interview whatever questions they ask about abstract class and and then abstract method you will be able to answer right okay so the second one it says an interface okay so another possible test question is that what are the difference between at least write down four or five differences between an abstract class and an interface an interface is a contract between an interface is a contract okay that if a class inherits an interface okay that must implement the uh, methods defined in the interface in my lecture i discussed there are some minor or critical differences between interface in c sharp and java but in a test we are not going that minor critical differences okay we will ask you just common to write the common concept so everything in an interface is abstract by default but in an abstract class you, you may have no abstract method an abstract class can be zero to hundred percent abstract everything can be abstract or nothing can be abstract but an interface is hundred percent abstract everything in interface is abstract so nothing in so the type method cannot have a body okay and another common thing is that an interface and an abstract class cannot be instantiated okay you can instantiate an interface or an abstract class so this type of questions so you know person is an abstract class teacher is a concrete class i novel is an interface human is an is a concrete class and object is a by default default uh, class built in class higher, higher level okay so so if you are asked like this kind of question first of all think that we can follow the the an abstract method and a, an and an interface cannot be instantiated so this is false number number uh, so this is obviously this is wrong right this is not correct okay and this is not correct and this is not correct so on the right side we cannot have any abstract class or any interface right then let us ask start for look for the other other steps okay so <clears throat> now let us ask a question how to understand this one are all teachers teacher yes right so the answer is yes if the answer is yes then it is correct okay okay and let's ask same similar question are all objects teacher no there are some object table chair right student so this is not correct okay are all human teacher okay okay so one thing that it does not it is not related to reality it is reality it is related to the context of this question okay so let us see that in in our in our question do we have any relation between human class and teacher class so human class is here is an abstract is a concrete class this is derived from interface right and teacher class is a concrete class of person 
they don't have any relation, right? Even the context is true. Okay, even uh, even it you have even you would get like uh, when you would get teacher on the right side, teacher on the right side, and and human on the on the on the left side. So if I say human, human over here. So then this question. If you in general, all teachers are human, right? But this this question's context is not true. And the context of this question is because the teacher class has no relationship with human. Okay. And in, in addition to this, in my test. Or in my lecture, I discuss with something that with uh, is, uh, typecasting, upcasting, and downcasting. Okay, upcasting is automatic. Right? Okay, upcasting that means if I say human. If my human class is like that, no, not human. So we we we, we correlated a person and teacher, right? So if my person class is like that, and a teacher, so all teachers are by default person, right? So that means upcasting is obvious okay but so upcasting is obvious but downcasting is that are all person teachers no but for instance for instance if i have this question so all teachers are not person okay Okay, okay, sorry, all teachers, all teachers are person. Okay, this is correct. But I have, I'm, I'm trying to write something. Teacher. So would the person and teacher thing be like a number B. Uh, sort of thing? Sorry, what is that? Your, what is your question? Would the person and teacher relationship be like sort of squares and rectangles sort of thing? All teachers are people, yeah. but all, not all people are teachers? Yes. Cool. So Thanks. it goes, for instance, person may be student. Okay. Maybe employee. Okay. Maybe there are some drivers. So, so if you ask question yourself, are, are all person teacher? No. All person employee? No. All person student? No. Okay, but all teachers are person. All teachers are uh, all student. Every student is a person. Every employee is a person. What I wanted to do, number two, number B. If I write this, teacher, T2 equal to mm. So give attention to specific this statement. What do you think? Is it true or false? Let us see without this one. This is casting here, right? So without casting, what happens? Without casting, so all persons are not teachers, right? 
every person is not a teacher. Okay, but we know that there are some 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 persons they are teachers. So, but if we do a filter, how about if we do a filter and extract the person who are only teacher, then definitely they are teacher, right? So this is the filtering over here. This is called this is called downcasting. And it is true. It works. So you can remember this way, like this is the casting, down casting is filtering. Filtering. So are you saying that's the same as saying person equals teacher? It's just written backwards? Yeah. So like if I write if I would write this this statement, then it is true. So what I like you, please practice this, okay? So quick question though. What purpose does that serve? This Why purpose. Okay, it serves it serves polymorphism. It's called polymorphism or runtime polymorphism. It is in some book you will see this. It's called object relationship or polymorphic statements. These are special. But if I filter this way, teacher set T pi equal to human new. New teacher. Is this correct? So without this filtering, what is this? Without this filtering, is this correct or incorrect? Without filtering, it is correct, right? Right. All teachers are teachers. Right? Right. But can we filter out some 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 humans from teacher? So maybe teachers are human. Teachers are human being, right? In reality, but we have to say that in, in context of these questions, in context of this question, are there any relations between uh, my human class and teacher class? No. They are two separate then into separate domain, right? So, so that will not be correct. These are like interview questions. So if you understand these, then you will crack the job interview. Okay, now someone sent me an email. He or she was asking, asking me to give some examples of our start class. So if you go to my replete account, if I get my replete account, STR. okay, you see that our start class and interfere vehicle example and C sharp, our start class vehicle C sharp C plus plus. I am giving better uh, this this. One is maybe spring 2020, 2020, C sharp. Maybe spring 20, test two. This one is the spring 20, right? Okay, these are the answer of these questions is here. Okay, so. OK. 
and is okay there are three programs they are pretty similar but if you i like you to to write do not copy and paste code okay, directly write line by line especially i like you to get some error message whenever you get some error message don't be panic try to understand what is the root cause of this error message you will see if you understand like maximum 20 error messages there are commonly Uh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> they will get stuck. <laughs> I didn't do any two people will get stuck about it. So they don't understand. They will understand. Okay. Sorry. This is on that. If you want. Yeah. Abstract class and interface spring twenty. Abstract class vehicle. Abstract. Oh, I get two programs. Sam. C sharp twice. What else? Okay, there's no string operation questions in this test, okay? The, we don't need to study this one, this test. Okay. And if we have GUI questions, then there will be very simple questions like this. There are very shortcut questions. Okay, practice this. This one with this uh, test questions. And what else? Okay, we discuss the difference between uh, method overloading and method overriding. Okay, so jot down four or five differences between method overloading and method overriding. So method overloading happens within a class, right? In a single class, there will have multiple methods. The methods will have same name, but they will have different type of parameters or different number of parameters. Okay. 
it does not have any effect on, on return type or return state, return type. Okay. So that is an interview question or quiz question that overloaded methods do not have effect on return type. Return type can be return type is different, but still they cannot be overloaded. Double loading depends on the number of parameters or types of parameters. Okay, and method verb overriding happens within parent class and child class. If a method is declared within parent class, if you want to redefine, redeclare in child class, then that is called method of writing. Like for instance, the common common method of writing is this two string method. Okay, one thing is that two string method volatile return returns a string type. If you write write a method named two string and return something else without string, then that is not considered as a two string method. Okay, like for instance, and a constructor. Okay. If you give any name of a method except the class name exactly, then that cannot be constructor. Constructor name exactly same name of its class class name. And a constructor cannot have a return type or return statement. Okay. And oh, in our last lecture, how many of you joined in last lecture? Yeah, we discuss uh, we discuss uh, um, What is this called? To display number of a series of numbers using recursively, right? To display some numbers recursively, it can be one to ten or one four eight, like this way, with some interval working. So practice this program also, please. That's it. You will get a question from recursive recursion, and then you will get a start class. You will get interface. Okay, and uh, like this. Okay. Um, will the recursion questions be like, what's the basic elements of of recursion, like base case and all that? No, you have to write the code for them. I mean, last okay. lecture, follow my last lecture. Cool, all right. Did you see my last lecture? Yes. Okay, yeah, please follow my last lecture. Let me see if I have uploaded it. I will upload this lecture today also, tonight or tomorrow morning. Let me see. Yeah, maybe this question. This, this one. Yes, this one. Yeah, practice this, 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 this one, okay? Okay. Okay. What else? Is there anyone that has any question? Okay. If you don't have any question, then I like to uh, wrap up today early, and then let us see our course schedule. What can we? So your test will be next, next, next class time. Okay. Take it from home or in a. In a stable position, that you have good internet connection. Okay. Today is What is this? October <laughs> October five and six, what is this? Oh sorry, this is lab. I'm sorry. It is the labs syllabus.
Okay, quiz six is not posted yet. So we have time. Okay, we have few more quizzes. So quiz six will be on recursion. Okay, in our next lecture, next week we will miss a lecture, right, for the test. So then exception handling. Let us spend a few minutes about exception handling so that in one in, in the remaining class I can finish it. Hmm? No, exception handling. This one will not be in test. Question. Yeah, and then differences and uh, those are okay. And in test two, you will not be allowed to write pseudocode. Actually, writing pseudocode is difficult for declaring our start class and interface. Okay. Easy to practice uh, writing code. Okay, exception handling is, is not uh, loaded yet. I have my old slide, maybe. First, I will start here. Okay, so let us discuss a few minutes about exception handling. So what is an exception? An exception is an unexpected error in the program, like an accident. It may happen so anytime, right? Nobody expects for an accident, but it happens frequently. It may happen anytime or anytime. So what do we, we usually, what do we do in our real life? If an accident happened, we try to save ourselves, right? Our life, our, our uh, pro car, and then our properties, and then we find an alternative measure to escape that, right? So exception is something like that. Whenever, if your program, if you want to run your program, and then if there is an exception happen. For instance, if you do mistake in, in a typo, if you have a typo in your code, so it will obviously show an error. So that is not an exception. Okay. So like, if you know that something will happen, we do not say that there is an accident, right? So this is an error. So whenever we get an error while running our program or compiling our program or writing our program, we take action to resolve that error, right? But sometimes it may happen that your, your program compile time, it will not make any error. But while running time, while your program running may not be happen always. It may happen sometime that and an error happened and that may crash your entire program or application. So now it is like our like operating systems are more stable than earlier days. If you are maybe stable, so if you, we, everybody is used to using apps, right? On phone app, right? Sometimes you see that, sometimes some apps crashes, crash, right? So whenever you are running the app, sometimes it gives an, a, a message, right, something happened, or sometimes it does not give you any message, it restarts, or even the entire phone restarts. 
right? Or the app restart or app quits. That is the reason of an exception, unhandled exceptions. Sometimes if an exception is handled nicely, then that will not restart the device. But if an exception is severe, and if it's not handled, correctly, that may that may restart or quit the entire program or sometimes maybe the entire computer or entire system. Okay. So as in our real life, how do we handle an exception or like an accident? Right? So So this could be an interview question. I tell this story. <laughs> I tell this story very frequently, every time. So that this is an interview question. So like that, people may ask you a question. Hey, I don't. The, the interviewer, may, interviewer may ask you a question. That they may ask a question that. Hey, I don't understand the exception at all. I don't understand programming. Actually, those person. Those people understand programming very well. This is why they ask questions. Okay, so tell me a situation or a story that is related to exception handling in real life. Okay, so I give you a clue, right? An, an accident is an exception in real life, right? For instance, what happens if we so like still there are some highways or maybe few highways single lane, right? Single and I was. So what happened? You see that this gigantic truck is coming in this way, and and this road is not smooth, maybe zigzag. Okay. And how it happens if we know that there is a single lane, and all cars or vehicles are coming this way, coming all of them, all of them are coming like this way. These are incoming, right? This is incoming. It's coming or going? Coming, right? And it is the outgoing, right? It's the outgoing. So <coughs> this is inbound and it's outbound. So what happens if so it may happen that this this truck got stuck? It may be stuck, right? Then this this lane will be blocked, right? So then may, maybe there are may, maybe two, three, four, or hundred car vehicles waiting in the mind, right? So what you, in your real life, what do you do? So then we use this single lane, this lane, we use, we use this lane, sometime for incoming, sometime for outgoing, right? Share this little right? Okay. So that is the kind of exception handling. If we get an accident, then instead of waiting hours after hours, we may share, although this lane is, is restricted, not for incoming, but we share due to situation in order to solve our problem, we use this lane for both incoming and outgoing. Right? This is one scenario. But in our real life, so in order to resolve this kind of issue, now the highways or freeways are made up with multiple lanes, right? So what are the benefits of having multiple lanes? More vehicles can go, right, in these multiple lanes. And then what happens that if one lane is blocked, then people can use other lanes, right? Okay, and now, more like another benefit is that in almost in all highways or, or freeways there is an extra lane only the law and like uh, emergency people emergency vehicle use this lane right usually we do not as general people are not allowed to to drive or use this lane right but it may happen if all lanes are blocked, then we may be allowed to drive this this way. But usually a fire, fire truck or a police vehicle usually, or an ambulance, they use this lane, right? So this is another way to handle exception or accident, right? 
so day by day people are are developing better way to handle exceptions or accident in our daily life okay similarly in programming context okay it may happen an accident and then mean an error for instance this program it will run good this program will run good for instance it says d equal to g divided by y minus 2x so instead of like in this program so here my y value is 10 and x value is is 5 so 10 minus 2 times 5 equal to 10 equal to that denominator is 0 right so divided by 0 so then if you run this program then it will show you an exception it will it will give you an exception so it will say that most most compilers are intelligent enough then they can cast this uh, exception and will will give you give you this uh, this error message if the compiler is not able to give this error message exception message then what will do compiler will stop it will exit it will crash like this this one okay forwarding one Okay, this program. <laughs> so, if I run this program, it will give me an exception. It says, okay, so exception, the thread main. So, it says this is giving me an exception, right? So in that case, I can resolve this issue ahead of time. This is a common exception. That means, okay. But if we do not know the value of x and y ahead of time, for instance, our, we are getting x and y from another program or from another statement, right? In that case, at the first time or, or in our known we may not see this type of divide by zero occurrence right it may happen while the program is running or it may happen after hundreds times or thousands times or several months or or several years this maybe this is a part of a program application okay so in that case what may happen an exception may happen so your program if uh, my program handles this exception if my program knows that what will happen what it needs to do uh, if it gets this type of ex exceptions then that is called exception handling then in that case for instance here the compiler knows that it is divided by zero so it's, so its compiler is not terminating it's just it is terminating the program and giving an error message if the compiler did not have this feature, then what it do? The compiler, the like Eclipse, would terminate, would crash. Okay, but it is it has handled this exception. Okay, but our goal will be write this code to reconcile this code. Okay, to write this code so that whenever it happens, like this situation happens your program will bypass or it will give you an error message or it will terminate only this this part not the entire program not the entire application not the system not the device okay it is possible to see if so our goal will be try to resolve this issue with minimum loss okay so that is our goal to handle exceptions. Okay, so in order to handle exceptions, okay, there are some built-in exception classes that we can use, or we can develop our own exception classes, and we can give exception messages and then 
so uh, not today in our next lecture i will discuss this okay since this will not be in your test <laughs> i don't like you to uh, i think you will not give attention but i think two one lecture should be fine or on another half lecture should be fine okay that we will discuss exception handling okay so in your final exam you will get questions from exception handling okay anyone has any question about test okay i i wish you will do it professor i have a question yes um could you explain in inher inheritance he heredity inheritance hierarchy yes yes So I have furniture. I have my furniture class is top level. What do we mean by furniture? So some household items, right? This can be some chair. It can be some table or what else answer couch okay so this is the base level base class and these are child children class Okay, so table, there may have different types of tables, right? What are the different types of table we know? Maybe this round table. Okay, maybe dining table. Right? Maybe other kind of table, there are other kind of tables. For instance, I don't want them there. Okay. The dining table can be, again, other types. There are round dining table, there are rectangular dining table, there are oval dining tables, right? So, for instance, maybe these are oval over dining table and maybe there are other okay. round dining table okay so now so these are the class hierarchy okay now any object you can create in order to create an object we need to use class right constructor right so now go now recall the questions so are wall round table furniture yes right are wall oval dining table furniture yes so whatever inside below below are all so so uh, up casting is called up casting is obvious Okay. But downcasting is not obvious. Downcasting means that all furnitures are not chair, all furnitures are not table, all furnitures are not couch, all furnitures are not dining table, right? Okay. So if you uh, uh, like understand this, then you you got to start off, or you should understand the uh, the class hierarchy. Now, what is your question? Class hierarchy. Then 
Do you have any specific question about class hierarchy? I know, sir. I just need an explanation for it. I can, uh, I can spend hours after hours to explain this. But what is your specific question? Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't need an ex, uh, I didn't have a question. I just needed like a basic conceptual explanation of the question. Uh, like, yeah, um, this is the yeah. this is the concept, basic concept. Cool. cool. Okay. Anyone has any other question? Okay, if you don't have any questions, so please be prepared for your test. Test two, okay, do not miss test two. If you take test, all three tests, then there is a chance that you will do, you will get a replacement of your lowest test grade by your final, right? Yes, I don't have time to. Sometimes I do not go to chat. If you have a question, then speak out, okay? So, no one has no more question, right? Okay, thank you so much, and you have a good evening.